thankful. So very, very thankful today for that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Last week, we talked about peace. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about that for a few more minutes this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And that's what we've been talking about, and that's what we're finding out, as most of you know, is very rare in the day that we live in. With the headlines that you see in the newspapers, yeah. the things that you hear on the news whenever you turn on the television, the things that you hear in the news on the radio, if you still listen to the radio news, very rare do you hear anything good. Amen? So it's True. always something bad. Some war, some famine. Something going on. True. And there's no doubt that we are living in the last days. Yes, Amen? Sir. No doubt at all. Jesus would talk about these times in, in Luke the 21st chapter and Matthew the 24th chapter. Right. And he would talk about, Brother Dave, he would talk about things like the distress of nations. Right. Wars and rumors of wars. Mom. The sea roaring. Right. He would talk about being his people being hated by men. Yes. Amen. For his name's sake. He would talk about being forsaken by your family. Amen. He would talk about earthquakes. Right. He would talk about famine. Right. He would talk about pestilence. True. He would talk about all of these calamities that were coming upon the earth. Yes, sir. In the book of Luke 21 and 26, he would say this about men. Come on. In Luke, the 21st chapter, the 26th verse, he said, Men's hearts failing them for fear. Amen. Why? For looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Yes, sir. At a time whenever it seems like every headline is a bad one, on. when it seems like every news report is one of doom and gloom. Jesus said that during that time men's hearts would fail them for fear. And it's not hard to figure out why. But He tells us it's because they are looking after those things which are coming on the earth. When did Peter begin to sink? We sung about this morning. The Bible says that whenever he stepped out on the water, he began to walk on the water. But whenever he saw the winds blowing, when he saw that the waves were boisterous, that the storm was hitting hard, that's whenever he began to sink. Amen. When he got his eyes off of Jesus mm -hmm. right. and he got his eyes on the things that was going on around him, sure. that's when you'll lose your peace today. Yeah. That's when you'll find yourself in turmoil today. Yeah. Whenever you get your eyes off of God and His Word Come on. and you get your eyes on the headlines instead, mm -hmm. Why was all of Israel hid down in their foxhole and David didn't hide? Because David had his eyes on his God. And Israel had their eyes on their enemy. Amen? The longer you look at your enemy, the bigger your enemy gets. Amen? The longer you look at your problem this morning, Brother Dave, the worse your problem gets. Amen? The bigger it gets. The more you look at the devil, the bigger the devil gets. And the smaller your God seems. So men's hearts fell in them for fear because of looking on those things. When you get your eyes off of Jesus, when we get our eyes off of Jesus and we get our eyes on the things, yes. that's whenever we begin to lose the peace that Jesus wants us to have. Because we will begin to be troubled in spirit and in mind right. and in heart. Amen? True. Right in the middle of all of these things, Jesus would say in Matthew 24 and 6, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Wars and rumors of wars. Pestilence. Earthquakes in divers places. False Christs. Yet Jesus would say, Be not troubled for all these things must come to pass right so we're learning this past couple of sermons how in the midst of all of this we cannot be troubled how in the midst of wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes how we can still have peace during those things amen amen and we touched on this the other night the Apostle Paul talking about things. 
in our life. Talking about troubles in our life. Talking about how these things will come, but also telling us that all things work together for good. To them who are the call, to them who love God, who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. Right. The Apostle Paul would say in 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, beginning of the 6th verse, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts. I'm in 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Listen to what Paul says. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. All right. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Come on. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now let's take it, let's slow down for a minute and take a look at what he said. He's talking about a treasure that we have in earthen vessels. He's talking about Jesus and our faith in him and his finished work. Faith in the Word of God. Amen. He said, We're troubled on every side, so let's give up. That's not what he said. No. He said, We're troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. How is it possible today to be troubled on every side yet not be distressed? Come on. We find it hard today to find people who are not distressed, oppressed, True. depressed. Amen. No peace. Mm -hmm. no, all, they're, they seem like they're in a turmoil. True. And in the midst of this, the Apostle Paul says, but we're not distressed. It says... But it says we are perplexed, right. but not in despair. Come on. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Amen? True. He's talking about this hope, this faith, this peace that we've been talking about. The peace of God that passes all of our carnal understanding. Amen? Yes. The peace that Jesus speaks of. In our foundational scripture for this teaching, in John the 14th chapter, the 27th verse, when he looks at the disciples, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. This peace that Jesus is talking about. Right. And we talked about this last Sunday. I don't want to cover that ground again. But it's important for us to know today that anything in this earth, anything in this life, mm -hmm. anything in this world that we get our peace from, right. our peace is dependent upon those things. And those things will soon fade away. Amen. And when those things fade away, so will your peace. If you felt good last Sunday morning and that feeling or that peace that you had was dependent upon the fact that your billfold was full of money and this Sunday you're broke, you don't have peace this Sunday because the money that you had your faith in, the money that you had your was getting your peace from, that peace is gone because your money's gone. Amen. 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 If you was getting your peace whenever you woke up yesterday morning and you looked at the stock market and the stocks that you had invested in, they were up, amen, and things were looking good and you felt good about that. You, you got some joy from that. you got a feeling of peace. There is a feeling of peace that comes from that. Right. And you had a good day yesterday. But this morning, oh, this morning, you opened up the Wall Street Journal and your stock was down and your day wasn't so good. Why? Because your peace and your joy and your happiness was dependent upon something temporal in this world that is subject to change, not just from one day to the next, but from one minute to the next. Amen. The sooner we realize that we cannot count on anything in this world or what this world has to offer, the better off we'll be. Amen? Yes. Because our peace can come from only one source. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Faith in His Word today is the only place to find real everlasting peace. Because then you know 
I may be going through the valley, but yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. When I run in thy staff, they comfort me. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I can feel the Spirit. That ain't what it says. Because I can hear God. That ain't what it says. Because everything, because I can find some semblance of glory in something this world has to offer. No, he said, I can walk through the valley and I can have peace. I will not fear because you are with me. That same promise is for you today. He said, I will never leave Sleese Butler. I will never forsake him. If Brother Sleese misses out it because he chose to walk away, because God ain't going to walk away from you. Amen? Come on. Peace that passes all understanding. Not as the world gives to you, but peace that comes from Jesus Christ and His Word. Amen? Come on. So as he spoke there in the book of Luke about men's hearts failing them for fear, mm -hmm. Because they were looking on the things that were coming upon the earth. Oh. The same thing will happen to you today. You will feel like sitting down and giving up mm -hmm. if you keep your eyes on what's going on. Yes, sir. Yeah. If we do not learn, the only way you're going to endure to the end is to know that no matter how bad it looks, mm -hmm. you already read the back of the book and you know how the story ends. Yeah. Amen. Come on. To realize today that whenever the enemy says these things are going to destroy you, to realize that his word says that these things are for my good. Mm -hmm. They're going to work for my good. Mm -hmm. When the enemy says you can't make it, Come on. to realize that God's word says I am more than a conqueror mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To realize today that his word, not the newspaper, not the reporter, not the television news, right. but his word, not Washington. Come on. His word is the final authority on all things. Amen. Come on. His word is the final authority yes, on all things. That's true. This old earth is as wicked and as evil, mm -hmm. maybe as it's ever been. Right. Amen. True. It certainly was bad when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And someone said, and I've heard this before, and I don't really like it. They said that God's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah or He's going to have to do something first. There ain't no apologies going to be issued from heaven. Amen. Amen. That's true. Judgment's coming. Yes. Judgment's coming. It has, been, it has been put off by God's mercy and by His grace yes. to allow man to repent, but judgment's coming. Amen. And in the midst of a world that is full of turmoil, mm -hmm. there's only one place to find your peace today, and that comes from the Word of God. Of God, having your faith in the things that God says, and knowing that you know that you know that all things work together for your good, yes. that He is still on the throne, that Amen. prayer still changes things, yes. that no matter how you feel, that has nothing to do with it. You can feel great and good and holy and spiritual, that don't make you more saved. You can feel lower than a snake's belly, that don't make you lost. Faith. In Jesus Christ, faith in His Word, that's what's going to see us through. Amen? Amen. That's true. Romans the 8th chapter is what I was talking to you about a while ago. Paul would say, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Yeah. Shall tribulation, Come on. distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? Now, we have faced some of those things. We haven't faced all of those things, but a lot of times we allow things like that to separate us from Him. Yes. We get down in the muddy grubs. Come on. We feel sorry for ourselves sometimes. Anybody ever done that? I've done that before. Amen. But Paul, after talking about these things, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword, he said, nay. Well, even death. He talks about even death in the very next verse. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. So even death cannot separate you. Amen. He said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him. Through His victory. Amen is what He's talking about. Through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded. I wish we could get a hold of some of this this morning. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, right. nor angels, Come on. nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Same chapter, a few verses above that, he says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Right. You are going to go through things today. Yeah. There's no getting around that. I don't care what that slick willy preacher told you this morning come when on. you tuned him in before church and told you everything is going to be roses and everything's going to come up great. All you have to have is a positive attitude come and on. declare these victorious things over your life and you'll never face another trial. He's full of baloney. Amen? Amen. Every one of us are going to go through things today. Yeah. There is no question today that you are going to face trials. There is no question today that you're going to walk through valleys. There is no question today that you are going to see some hard times in this life. The question is, are you going to try to walk through them alone depending upon the broken crutches this world has to offer? Or are you going to grab a hold of that nail-scarred hand and say, Jesus, I know whether I can feel you, whether I can see you, whether I can take you, whether I can smell you, I know you are with me because your word says you are with me. Amen. Real peace, true peace can only come through faith. And trusting His Word. Right. Trusting in Him Guarantee. today. Turn with me to Isaiah the 43rd chapter. Isaiah the 43rd chapter. I want to read a few verses there. I heard a brother bring this up this week and this went so well with what we've been talking about. I jotted it down and thought I'll share that with you this morning. Isaiah 43. We're going to read the first five verses. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee. Right. Now listen, I, want you, I don't want you to just look at this this morning as God speaking to Isaiah. I want you to hear these words as God speaking to you. Because that's what His Word is. His Word is a letter to you. Right. Somebody said, God don't speak to me. When's the last time you read your Bible? Come on. Amen. Come on. He speaks to me, Brother Sleeves, every time I look inside this book. All right. Amen. Every, every promise in the book is mine. Right. Amen? Yeah. Every jot, every tittle, every line. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want you to listen to this this morning as if he's speaking to you. Yeah. I'm in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Isaiah. It's in the Old Testament. The 43rd chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning of the first verse. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, mm -hmm. and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. You see, you've been grafted into the vine, so you can claim. Now listen to me. Amen. If you're out there today and you don't know Jesus, if you're not saved, these promises are not for you. Ooh. The only... Listen, you may think, well, Brother Billy, why'd you say that for? Because preachers all across this nation did not make that clear this morning. Yes, sir. Their sanctuaries, their mega churches were filled with people. Come on. Who knows how much percentage of them is lost and they went out of there thinking that they've got the same promises and the same things going on in their life as the Christian does. You are only heir to these promises once you come by way of the faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 I have heard people that leave these mega churches and they would say, well, I'm an atheist, but he sure does encourage me. He sure does give me, some, I, I really feed off what he's got. Because he's telling me I can do all things. I can be all things. I can think all things. Everything can be... No, 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 no. These promises don't belong to you until you come by way of the old rugged cross. Once you do, you are grafted into the vine and these words are for you today. Listen. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. You see, he makes that pretty plain. Yes. I have called thee by thy name. Amen. Thou art mine. Oh, did you hear that? The next time the devil says you belong to me, you're a blood-washed Christian, tell him, no, you're a liar. I belong to him. Amen? Amen. I came by way of the blood. My faith is in Jesus Christ. My, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness this morning. True. You belong to me. Oh, that be, that's enough to make you shout. Hallelujah. Amen. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Yes. Now listen to what he says in verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, he didn't say if. He said, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers. He didn't say if you pass through the rivers. He said, When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, 
He didn't say if you walk through the fire. If you happen to go through something. No, he said when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shalt the flame kindle upon thee. Why? Verse 3, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Oh, you ought to mark this in your Bible this morning. Hallelujah. I gave Egypt for my ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Now listen, verse 5, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Fear not. Because when you go through the fire, when you go through the water, when you go through the flood, when you go through the valley, when you go through the trial, I'm with you. Amen. I'm with you. That's, how can you find peace in the midst of the storm knowing that He is with you in the midst of the storm? Amen? Amen. Knowing that this thing did not come to stay, it came to pass. Knowing that this thing did not come to destroy you, but it's going to make you stronger. Amen? As long as you hold to His nail-scarred hands, He's going to bring you out on the other side of the desert stronger than you were when you went in. Come on. Knowing that He is with us. Brother yeah. Tyler, you can sit down, son, if you will to. I'm going to be a few minutes. I try to stay in one place. When you walk through the fire, when you go through the flood, when you walk through the valley, when you face the giants, when you face your flesh, when you face the dark of night, and every one of us, this ain't no if, this ain't no maybe, but all of us are going to face things in life. Yes, sir. All of us are going to stand at the graveside of loved ones. Amen? And the only peace to be found in that situation comes from trusting in His Word. Yes. All of us sooner or later, unless we just fall over or the Lord comes back and gets us, all of us are going to face sickness and death. Right. Amen? True. When you're laying on your deathbed, the greatest, most encouraging words and the fanciest preacher that says them can't bring you the kind of peace that God's Word does whenever the Apostle Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. True. To know that this corruptible must put on incorruption. <laughs> Amen. To know that this mortality must put on immortality. Hallelujah. Peace in God's Word today. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. This, he's given it to us. He is the prince of this peace. The, the counterfeit peace that the world offers. And that's what it really is. It's not real peace. It's counterfeit. It's just right above the surface. But it's very thin and very temporal. And passes away at the very least little thing. But the kind of peace that he gives doesn't. He says, fear not for I am with thee. Fear not for I am with thee. Same words... Along the same lines, he spoke to Joshua when he spoke to him in Joshua, the first chapter in the ninth verse, whenever Joshua was facing a journey without Moses for the first time. Did you hear me this morning? Yeah. He had followed Moses. Moses had been his leader. He'd been his, he'd been his mentor. Now he faces being the leader. Now. Now he's the leader. And I can't even imagine the the feelings and the emotions and things he was going through. But the Lord tells him in verse 9 of Joshua, the first chapter, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Amen. He's telling us that today. In the midst of trial, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of the last days, wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, family forsaken you. Men hating you because of his name, say he's saying, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. When you cross Jordan, Joshua, I'm going to be with you. When you stand before thy 
the tall walls of Jericho that look impossible. I'm going to be with you. Amen. I can't imagine the times that Joshua, as he faced a battle, would look back and reflect back on these words and trust in the words that God said. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Hallelujah. That's what he's speaking to us today. Regardless of what Hollywood does, regardless of what Washington does, regardless of what the church does, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. When you go through the flood, I'm with you. When you go through the fire, I'm with you. When you go through the valley, I'm with you. When you go through the trials, I am with you. Oh, that ought to bring us a peace today. Yes. To know that He'll never leave us. Amen. He'll never forsake us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But He's always with us. He's always with us. Hallelujah. Say, but, but the devil told me he wasn't. Well, that ought to be proof enough to know that he is. Because everything he says is a lie. Amen. He's, the, he's a liar and the father of lies. Hallelujah. He's been lying since the beginning. Amen. David said, hey, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. When I walk through the valley, I won't fear any evil because I can dance. Because I can play a good banjo. Because I can sing good. Because I'm talented. Because I can speak some. I can declare some things in my life. I don't believe this is happening. I refuse it. No, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Oh, I wish we could get that. For thou art with me. I wish we could get that today. Somebody say, I wish I could get that today. Oh, my, 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 my. Even in what is probably man's greatest fear, death, the Bible says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? They used to sing that old song. They still do, I guess. I say that a lot, but they're not really songs that have been done away with. But I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Amen. Yes. He'll hold my hand. Amen. And lead me across Chile, Jordan. Paul said, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Amen. You can do all things through Christ. Yes. You can be persuaded today, as Paul was when he said, I am persuaded that He is able. You see, that's one of the first things you've got to realize in order to have this kind of peace. And we're going to talk about peace and salvation in a minute. A lot of people don't have peace in their salvation today. Because our flesh is not truly persuaded that He is able, because we think we have to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? I know people who think... They used to anyway think they're saved one day and lost the next. Right. And if we can get our eyes on Him and His promises and off of the things in the world and the headlines and the circumstances and the life that is going on around us, we will go, listen, we will go through things. We've already established that. Right. And we won't always have a smile on our face and show our pearly whites or our right. gums, whichever the case may be. We won't always be... Feel like we're walking on cloud nine. Come on. But we can have this peace. Yes, sir. Peace in knowing that no matter what I'm going through, right. He's with me. Amen. Peace in knowing no matter what things are, those things will in the end work together for my good. good. Peace in knowing today that if I'm broke, the potter can put me back on his wheel. He won't throw the clay away. He'll shape me and form me and make me what he wants me to be. Come on. Peace in knowing today that when I sin, yes. If I confess my sin, He is faithful and He is just to forgive me of my sin. Somebody said, what if God won't forgive me? Already been settled. He said, if we would confess our sin, He is faithful. He is just to forgive me of my sins. Amen. What if God won't save me? No such thing. Amen. Right. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. What if he gets tired of messing with me? Gets tired of fooling with me and walks away? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But I'll go with you all the way to the end. Hallelujah. 
His promises, His words. Yes. Faith in that. Come on. Faith in that. Praise the Lord. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the troubles of the world? No. On thee. On him. Praise God. I mentioned peace and salvation a while ago. Many do not have it because their faith is not completely in him and his word. Mm -hmm. Many times it's in ourself. Yes. I believe that if I do good, then that makes me saved. I believe that I can be more saved sometimes. How many times have you felt more saved than at others? We all have. Maybe I should put it this way. We can understand it better. Have you, have you felt more righteous or more good about yourself than at other times? And what caused that? Something we did. Fasting. We fasted for three days. We feel more holy. We feel more right. Is fasting good? Yes, but your holiness and righteousness don't come from it. If it does, then you're saying His blood's not enough. Mm -hmm. There is peace today in knowing that the only means of salvation is the blood of Jesus Christ and your faith in that. Your faith in His finished work. Otherwise, if your peace comes from the fact that you're living holy, you're walking holy, you're doing crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's, where's your peace going to go when you don't get an I dotted? When you don't get a T crossed? When you don't follow, whenever you break one, whenever you mess up, where does your peace go? Your peace goes out the window because you were trusting in your flesh in order to be able to live it. You cannot live it. Amen? You are going to mess up. Amen? True. It is not in us. It is in Him. Right. That is where true peace of salvation. I never, 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 never go to bed and lay my head on my pillow wondering if I don't wake up the next day. I never, I never wonder where I'm going to go. There's not one time in my daily walk that I think, oh no, I'm not saved. <laughs> Why? Because of faith in Him right. and His Word. Mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago and I learned the hard way, Brother Dave, it is not of me. Amen. It is of Him. Amen? Yeah. I cannot save myself. He wants us today to have blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Praising my Savior. Amen. All the day long. I probably got two songs mixed in there. That's right. There's peace to be found in salvation. Yeah. I've heard people say, well, if I can just make it in by the skin of my teeth, you don't have to. You ain't going to. Come on. Read something, a man went to heaven. Purely fictional, by the way, because St. Peter's not at the gate deciding whether to let people in or not. That's a Catholic doctrine. Did you know that? Right. We've got it in our songs. We've got it in our stories. But that's a Catholic teaching. Why? Because Jesus told Peter he was giving him the, gate, the keys to death and hell. And they think that that means he's got the keys to heaven. Let people in, whatever. But I don't. they might not have said Peter, but they said an angel. A man went. He's standing there. And, and the angel's looking over the book and the man says, well, I was good to my wife. And the angel said, one point. He said, I was good to, I, I gave money to the poor. <clears throat> and he said, two points. He said, I've done these other good things. I paid my tithes and the angel, and he wasn't getting very many points. And the guy thought, man, mm -hmm. at this rate, the only way I'm going to get in is by the grace of God. The angel said, oh, now you got it. Now you got it. <laughs> now you got it. Oh, As the only way you're going to get in is by the grace of God. Oh, Amen. God. You ain't going to get in because you's good enough. Amen. You ain't going to get in because you kept it well enough. Oh. Yeah, I don't care how holy you think you are. You ain't holy enough. Amen. Oh. There ain't but one way to get in. True. And there is peace in knowing that today. Yes, now, I'm not talking about some flimsy, flimsy, wishy-washy, I can do anything I want to do. If you've got that kind of an attitude, I don't even know if you're saved at all. Come on. Amen? Come on. But I'm talking about trusting. Yeah. Lord, I know that I can't, but I know Amen. that you already did. Yeah. 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 Amen? Come on. I can't do it, but you already did. <laughs> Come on. Peace in trusting His Word. Yes, sir. And you can find true peace in salvation today, knowing that He has accomplished the work as long as we put our faith in that. Amen? That prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. 
I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amen. <laughs> if I die before I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. You can know that you know that you know that you know right. that you are right with God. You don't have to wonder about it. You don't have to think, well, in the end, I hope I make it in. David could face Goliath because he had faith in God's Word. Abraham could leave his home in search of an unknown land that he'd never heard of before because he had faith in God's Word. Joshua, as we spoke, could lead the children of Israel across Jordan and face the enemies of Canaan land. Why? Because he had faith in God's Word. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll, oh, my goodness. I'll go with you whithersoever thou go. You can make it today. You can make I know the devil has told you all week. Your flesh has told you all week. You ain't going to make it. This preacher's telling you this morning, oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you are. As long as you have faith in His Word. Trust in His Word. Yes. Faith in His Word. That's where peace really comes from. Amen. Peace that if I'm broken, the potter can fix me. Right. Peace that if I sin, He is faithful to forgive me when I confess my sins. Amen. Come on, tell it. Peace that I can't do it. But He can. He yes. already has. Yes, Amen. sir. You say, I don't understand it. You don't have to. Right. I don't like it. You don't have to. Right. Just put your trust in Him. The road's going to get rocky. There's going to be trials. There's going to be things that you go through. Right. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to like it. Mm -hmm. You just have to trust Him. Yeah. You just have to trust Him. Right. I want to share something with you today in closing. And I like stories like this always. Bless my soul. I hope it blesses you. A man by the name of Joseph M. Scriven was born into a prosperous Irish family in September 10th, 1819. As a young adult, he graduated from Trinity College and became engaged. The night before he was to be married, his fiancée drowned. Hmm. After the loss of his fiancée, he moved to Canada. There he became, later on, he became engaged to a woman. She became deathly ill and died before they were able to get married. Thereafter, he joined a group called the Plymouth Brethren who helped elderly people and homeless people. And he was known as a selfless man. One that would help anyone that was in need. In 1855 he learned that his mother was on her deathbed. She was in Dublin, Ireland. He was unable to go to her. So he sat down and he wrote her a letter. And he enclosed a poem. Later when he himself was healed and on his deathbed a friend came to visit and going through some of his papers, he happened to find this poem scribbled on a piece of paper. And although Mr. Scriven never intended for the poem to be published, it was only for his mother. He never intended for anything else to be done with it. It was included in a small collection of his poems and later was found by a composer who set music to it, to it and added it to a hymn book. That song goes something like this. What a friend we have in Jesus all our cares and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer Oh, think about that this morning. Mm. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Earlier in the service, we were singing that song. As I travel through this pilgrim land, I have a friend who walks with me. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad today that He leads you safely? Amen. That He never leaves you. Amen. Yes. The shepherd never leaves his sheep. Amen. Come on. He leads them. Guides them, takes care of them. Amen. True. He'll make sure they're in safety if he does have to go and find one of the more hard-headed sheep that right. strayed away. He'll make sure the others are safe and sound. He'll make sure you're safe and sound today. Right. We, not, we may not be able to understand everything. We may not like everything. But as long as we trust Him, we come out a winner on the other side. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My peace. I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Amen. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.